good song. So, um, it's Friday, uh, the night before, or the weekend, it's the Friday before Super Bowl, and, um, I'm kind of excited, not really because of the game, but, I mean, don't get me wrong, one of my best friends, Dad, is just, like, a diehard Giant fan, so I'm sure he's, you know, freaking out this weekend, but, um, I really want to see the halftime show, and a lot of people can be like, oh, Madonna, you know, they should have had so-and-so, or they should have had so-and-so, but I'm going to tell you what, that woman left a mark and an impression on me um, that was everlasting, that has always inspired me to, no matter what the frick people are going to say, do what you're going to do. Don't let other people control your creative influence. Don't let people screw with you. And she was quoted one time as saying, I have always walked around and acted like a celebrity. I always acted like a star. And, um, yeah, to a degree, she can be kind of stuffy, I guess. I don't know. I don't know her very well. I've just seen her on interviews and throughout her history of, uh, you know, music making and whatnot. But when Like a Prayer came out, just like Michael Jackson did the same thing, a lot of people have gone their own way and, and given up contracts and a lot, a lot of money to not sell out to do what it is that they want to do. And, and that's really kind of what it boils down to with me with the crosses on my forehead. It didn't matter if five guys were going to jump me and, you know, I can freak me out within an inch of my life. Um, I didn't stop doing that. I wouldn't stop wearing them. And I'm never going to stop wearing them until the day I die. It's something that I, you know, you can sit there and talk about terrorists and how they're willing to die for virgins. Well... Not me. I'm just willing to wear the cross every single day for that time when Jesus comes kabayim, which I've already seen. That's why I wear the crosses. And Revelation 22, 4 says that his name will be written on their foreheads. Um, I was wearing the crosses long before I ever found that passage. So I'm here tonight. I don't have... I've run out, actually. I'm tapped out almost on things to give away. Um, I have this kind of history of doing that. Um, I purge things sometimes. If somebody's in a bad way, I help them no matter what. I mean, you know, I, I don't really befriend people so much as kind of inadvertently come along when there's some kind of a crisis or something going on or I see somebody struggling and I help them. And, you know, the more that I kind of go along and do the things that I'm doing and develop the scripts and things get written out and things are in my head from the coma that I was in last August, um, you'll find that I kind of talk a little bit sort of like um, I'm detached. I'm not detached from reality. I'm fully aware of reality and that's what threw me in under the bus every time I ever went to the hospital was... Um, taking on suffering and taking on the human element and taking on things like Jesus did, which is very rare. There's not a lot of people who've ever come along uh, since he walked the face of this earth who have martyred themselves in the way that I have or been martyred by God in the way that I have. So anyway, the next couple of days um, since the money that I need for this month has come, come through, um, I'm going to have to improvise and start really making being a little bit more creative about how it is that I'm going to put my gifts together that I'm going to leave that I drop. And I have over 420 some odd videos so far. I'm going to move all of those over to uh, YouTube when I can. But um, every single day, God is just giving me more and more and more to do. And uh, it's really frustrating when you have like 7 billion people on the face of this earth and only maybe 10 people out of the entire world population um, is willing to help you, help me, help you, help me, help you. I speak in terms of, oh, humans don't understand, or you humans don't understand, or you people don't understand, or you guys don't get it, because the not of this world thing becomes more and more and more evident every single day that I live my life. What that's going to bring in the next 10 years, I'm not sure, because my son grounds me, he humanizes me. But, um, I've waited seven years to meet with certain people. I've waited seven long years to talk to certain people, to just say what I want to say and then move on with my life. And the thing about Facebook is that, um, as far as the whole celebrity thing, most of the 
people, if you look up Lady Gaga or you look up whoever, whoever, you either can't leave a message, it's just like a, a, a page that, you know, has all of their posts. You can make comments sometimes. But most of these celebrity sites are started by other people. They're not even started by the frickin' celebrity. Why in the hell would I want to look up Mel Gibson and leave a message to him for some freaking idiot that's a Mel Gibson fan? I'm sorry if you're one of those people that started a page under celebrity, but like Jobs said, time is short. You need to live your life and not someone else's. And I think that it's just sick. We live in a sick society. When you have to impersonate somebody, or it's about who knows who with other people, it's just... It's pathetic. And every single day I just get more and more disgusted with the stupid people, you know, of the world doing what it is they do. And I come across a lot of them doing what it is that I do as far as my ministry and leaving gifts for the world. Um, there's some people that come and stumble upon them and take them. Most people, they don't even get it. They don't even have a clue what the intention of that item is. And, uh... I do care to a degree, but I don't care nearly as much as I used to. So, as I started the beginning of this video, it's the Friday before the Super Bowl, and I'm excited to see Madonna, and um, I'm probably going to be doing some drops tomorrow, but I'm getting to the point where I'm just kind of lax. I'm laid back. I'm like, if Mel Gibson don't want to call me, why should I go and put on a big old show and do all these miracles when there's nobody there that will appreciate him? And that's the bottom line. So anyway, I'm going to move on with the night. And uh, thanks for watching. And remember, wherever you go, there you are.